Hello and welcome to BeamNG Drive. Today I'm going to take a look at the Taz Mir. The Taz Mir, this vehicle here, is a Soviet era vehicle and it comes together with the Baikal. So when you download the mod, you get the Baikal and the Mir. When playing this vehicle, I realized I saw something familiar in this vehicle and it is the fact that it's based on the Miramar. So I have one white Miramar here conveniently spawned. So now I'm gonna get them side by side a little bit more, please. Thank you. And as you can see, the same vehicle. So the Mir is based on the Miramar. A detail that caught my eye was this line here on the back. And I said, hmm, that looks familiar. And it, in fact, it was. The main differences are on the back, the lights and all this fascia is probably a little um, thinner, not that much. Uh, there is a different bumper. And uh, on the front, we have a straighter line on the hood, while the Miramar has a, bend, a more banded one. And that all the front is different. The interior, however, is exactly the same compared to the Baikal, probably because it comes from the same creator and even from the same mod package. This vehicle comes with 55 configurations, which is a lot, but the base vehicles are pretty similar to each other. The biggest differences are the front headlights and grille. The base models, have, uh, the older models have uh, round headlights, while the late models have squared headlights. And then you can have some exceptions like this deluxe with four headlights or this deluxe slate with a chromed front grille like the late standard as black grille, so minor changes. You can also have the sedan and the station wagon and the pickup truck flatbed or with or without cover as you as you like. And the base engines are a 1.2, a 1.3, 1.5 and 1.7 turbo diesel. There is also the option to have a 1.3 rotary engine, a 1.6, a V8 and a 2.5. For the special configuration we have the Rural Special and the Beater, two drift versions, one with an awesome flame paint job. There are few Finnish exports, the Conela, Conela Late, Conela Turbo, 1.3 Conela base. Uh, one of these, the 1.5 Conela Turbo Late, is the only one with four squared headlights. Then we have uh, Initial R, which is uh, a wannabe Torreno. Four configurations for authorities, Polizai, Police, uh, Milizia, Public Safety. We have a Siberian Express, a Coupe Concept with uh, only two doors. The Rotary configuration, one shiny and one rusty. A Cherry Air Swap, with, uh, this is the one with uh, the 2.5 liter engine and some racing and mad contraptions like uh, the 1.6 rally configuration, the race configuration, a V8 tuner. And a detail I found funny is in the description of the, of the race configuration, because it says it has a 2.5 liter inline 5 from a Cherrier Vivas with a massive turb skie thingy mabober. I don't know what it is, but it's funny. And now it's crash test time. I have four vehicles lined up and a wall in front of me. And now I'm going to smash all these vehicles. The first one is the 1.2 base configuration, the most basic you can have. Let's see. Oof. Heavy impact. This is an old vehicle, so and also from the Soviet era. We can imagine it's not the best quality. And as you can see, we have bending, huge bending on the roof and also on the chassis. The front is completely destroyed. The, the, the windshield is basically vertical on the impact, so it caved in quite a bit. And now there is the 1.7 turbo diesel late station wagon configuration. And let's see how it goes. Mm. 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 Heavy damage, okay, let, let's back up a little bit, okay, there is no suspension damage. The front 
I held a little bit better, but only because I smashed on a softer target compared to the wall. But I think I still see some bending, probably. I don't know if it's the these body panels that are not completely aligned. Anyway, but the doors, at least the passenger side, is damaged. The windshield is cracked, but uh, there is a lot less uh, bending overall of the roof, uh, just maybe a, a, a little bit. Uh, I can see, probably it's just me, but it looks like there is uh, a minor, yeah, probably on this corner, it's just uh, a little damage. Anyway, the next vehicle in line is the flatbed late. So, let's eat the back of the station wagon. I don't know if, if I can do a lot of damage. Let's... Oof! Yes, that was a lot of damage. Same as earlier, softer target, so we have minor damage here. Probably it's just the body panel. The window shattered. Hmm, unusual. The front, not much damage. But the yellow one had a lot of damage. The station wagon has, however, a lot of damage. Look at this. Completely destroyed vehicle. The glass of the windshield didn't broke, unusual, but the, the roof and the chassis are completely bent down. I don't know how it bent such down, but it did. So, and also in the middle, like where there is the, the rear seats, the roof is bent, so that's huge fragility, uh, I can say. And also from the top, we can see on the other side of the impact, so on the left side that didn't got damaged so much, it's still some bends, you can see, still see some bends. The last vehicle is the Polizei with four red lights. I forgot the name, it's not the Polizei, it's the Soviet militia. And I'm going to hit the back of the flatbed. Okay, that was a straight on impact. Ooh, the flatbed seems stronger because I see a lot of bending in the chassis compared to the, the yellow one and the flatbed when they hit the, the front, the, the vehicle in front, not the front air vehicle. I also got roof damage because the door exploded all on, the, on both sides. Hmm. And then on the pickup, let's see the flatbed. Oof. Okay, the chassis of this is completely destroyed. Look at the bending. Wow. That doesn't look good, but the bed absorbed a lot of, of, of the impact. And it didn't even bend so much. Maybe a little bit on the, on the door, it's stuck. Uh, then we have some clipping understandable even if these vehicles are considered old and probably with poor manufacturing i can i can say that they are somewhat solid for the test drive i chose the 1.3 rotary engine configuration also i did some changes in the audio setup so hopefully you will hear the sound of the rotary engine and now let's drive around a little bit okay brakes not exceptional because I hit the Wendover sorry Wendover so watch out for the brakes probably I did some lockup but ooh, B50 I wanted to hit it so bad but then trying to be a respectful citizen as I normally try to do for the first minute and then I go crazy another B50 <laughs> this is a bit wobbly has soft suspensions just like the Miramar because uh, this is based on the Miramar so it has a lot of similarities and the suspensions are one of these but it's still easily drivable the acceleration at least in this configuration is decent the brakes not the best because I hit okay now I didn't lock up so probably early I did a lock up now I'm already tired because there is a traffic jam and I want to, to drive some time this vehicle. Let's see the handling, how it is. So, ooh, now and, and nice dribbling, nice dribbling through traffic. 
Okay, nice. now I want to go fast. Not that much because the acceleration, while still decent, it's not the best. So I can also see here the engine sound. Okay, I lost control. I hit a dirt mountain, M mountain, uh, dirt bump, but I, I, it's still it's still alive. I have some exterior damage, probably some steering damage. Hey, Grand Marshal! Now he has some damage. Oh, but yeah, steering is completely destroyed. It wants to go to the right a lot. To go straight, I have to be at 50% steering left. Otherwise, he wants to go to the right. So, since I have a damaged vehicle, I can try to hit the B50. I lost control! Oof! Oh, ouch! Hmm. The D series was a hardest target to hit. And it did a lot of damage to my rotary mirror. Anyway, this was a, a quick test drive. Very quick. That descended into madness way faster than expected. <laughs> but at least we drove around a little bit. And now to do a second test drive. I chose the 1.6R. Which is a race configuration. A race prototype. And the Rochi Raceway. But since I am not the best at driving while speaking normally and driving to traffic, and now I have to do a lap around a racetrack, I'm going to shut up so you can hear also the sound of the vehicle. I almost overshot the last corner, that would have been a bad situation for me. Anyway, this was a lap around the Rochi Raceway with the Tazmir 1.6R. Hmm, nice impact. Hmm. Completely destroyed. Interesting, interesting. A quick detail about the race version is that it has a huge top speed. And I'm going to show you right now and how fast it reaches it because we are already at 250 km per hour and this goes at about Formula 1 level top speed and it, it can reach it pretty easily of course it doesn't have the, the cornering abilities of a Formula 1 vehicle but the top speed, look at this, 335 it's a torpedo 140. Look at that, 141. Just even, even faster than than Formula One vehicles with DRS open. Look at this. And then I'm going to slam on the brakes. Mm. Not the best braking compared to a Formula One vehicle, but the top speed is easily comparable. And full stop. And of course, the last thing I want to do is a run down the descent with a turbo diesel wagon. Let's not go too fast and try to give it some effect. Hopefully, I will hit. Oh, okay, that first hit. Wow. It, it is a banana. It is also yellow. Nice. Okay, I'm not hitting obstacles. That was not a hit. This looks like. No. This. Eh, almost. Uh, oh man. I got a banana. <laughs> Oof. Yeah. I got a turbo diesel banana. <laughs> anyway, that was a quick look at the Tazmir. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.